The Hot Delta Sun first rose on sugarcane, one of Louisiana's oldest and largest cash crops, more than 200 years ago. Squint, and the fields look much as they must have appeared then. But the industry has grown, matured, and now generates nearly 17,000 jobs in Louisiana. New technology, better refining processes, disease-resistant plants, higher yielding varieties, consistent use of environmentally safe farm practices, and vital scientific research all contribute to the industry's success. Today, Louisiana sugarcane is grown by hundreds of family farms in 22 Louisiana parishes. But the impact of sugarcane is felt by all of the state's residents as the industry contributes more than $250 million to the state's economy each month. That's $3 billion per year. Today, Louisiana sugarcane industry bears little resemblance to the process first developed 200 years ago in what is now downtown New Orleans. More than 400,000 acres and over 12 million tons of sugarcane are grown annually more than ever before, and it yields more than a million tons of sugar. Louisiana sugarcane is grown from central Louisiana to the Gulf of Mexico, and from the Mississippi River to the western plains of Acadiana. The process of planting and growing sugarcane has changed a great deal in two centuries. State-of-the-art mechanized harvesters and tractors Equipped with onboard computers using satellite directed global positioning technology, have created tremendous efficiencies for the industry. Two way radios and mobile phone communications allow the farmer to conduct cultivation, planting, and harvesting operations from the cab of his tractor. Nearly all field tasks are completed with machinery though some farmers still prefer to plant cane by hand. In August and September, stalks of cane are planted end-to-end -end in shallow trenches and covered. Sugar cane does not grow from seeds. It sprouts from the ringed joints called nodes on the cane stalk. During the summer months, cane normally grows as much as an inch a day. Farmers harvest cane in the fall, a year after planting. A specially designed harvester cuts the cane into short pieces called billets and then loads them directly into special wagons. The billets are then transferred to highway trailers for transport to the factory. Older whole stalk harvesters, still used by some growers, cut the mature cane and stacks it on the ground for loading and later delivery to the factory. Newer billet harvesters remove much of the leafy material, but the sweet pulp inside remains unscathed. At the factory, sophisticated machines test each load of cane to determine sugar content. Core samples are taken and weighed. Lab technicians then use a high-pressure press on the core sample to separate the sugarcane juice from the fibrous pulp called bagasse. After filtering, a saccharimeter is used to test the juice for sucrose and sugar content. Test results measure the quality of each load and how much the farmer will be paid. After being cored and weighed, the cane is unloaded and the milling process begins. The cane is washed, shredded, and enters the factory. A series of rollers crush the cane. A huge volume of cane juice is extracted, screened, and poured into liming tanks. Lime is added to ensure the proper acidity and to aid settling. The juice is heated and the remaining solids are removed. The clarified juice is boiled in vacuum tanks until the water evaporates. A dark, thick syrup remains. Next is crystallization. 
Syrup is pumped into large tanks called vacuum pans to cook. The mixture is periodically checked under magnification to determine crystal size and readiness. When cooking is completed, raw sugar and molasses are still mixed together. A spinning centrifuge is used to separate the raw sugar crystals from the molasses. The molasses is used in animal feeds. Raw sugar goes to a warehouse and is cooled. This warehouse holds several million dollars worth of raw sugar. Bagasse, the fibrous remains of the plant once the cane juice has been squeezed from the stalks, is used in the mill's furnaces to generate the steam and heat to run the mill and process the sugar. Trucks, barges, and trains bring the raw sugar to a refinery to be made into white, powdered, and brown sugars, as well as the liquid sugar used by many commercial food processors. Heavy machinery unloads and moves mountains of raw sugar in the refinery warehouse. The refinery extracts molasses with a centrifuge spinning at 1200 revolutions per minute. The sugar is then heated and melted to a liquid state. The liquid sugar is clarified by removing solids, then boiled several times. Each boil produces a pure white sugar. The final boiling produces a brown sugar. The sugar is then packaged by high-speed machines. This pure and natural Louisiana sugar is palletized and shipped throughout the nation. Many people enjoy sugar on a daily basis, and you can continue to enjoy them because most of the myths about sugar consumption don't tolerate close scientific scrutiny. Sugar doesn't cause diabetes, obesity, or hyperactivity. In fact, sugar has been found to be essential to normal brain activity. There is no substitute for real sugar. So at only 15 calories per teaspoon, feel free to indulge in sugar's healthy benefits. Louisiana sugar started on a plantation in New Orleans more than 200 years ago and has come a long way since then. Louisiana sugar and the products it is used in have been an important and delicious part of our lives, all of our lives. Like the sun rises and sets, sugarcane is something Louisiana has come to depend upon and love. It's natural, it's healthy, it's good. Sugarcane, sweet sugarcane, the sweetness of our southern trees. Sugarcane, sweet sugarcane, fireflies in the jasmine scented breeze. There's a little shade beneath this tree, it shields me from relentless heat, and after.